Hi and welcome to Steve's Kitchen. I'm gonna be making today a chocolate and cheese cherry pizza. Now, I made a live chocolate and cheese pizza a little while ago on the channel, but it really wasn't what everyone was expecting, or at least one of the comments that I had on the channel said, I was really hoping you were doing chocolate and cheese, a bit like a pizza that we have here in the US. You'll excuse me ever when I say the US, I do of course mean the United States of Canada, which is a cherry pie pizza with cheese and chocolate drizzled over the top. Now that really perked my interest, cherry pie filling, I love it. But do you think I could find a cherry pie filling here in Australia? I Googled, is Googled even a word? Googled a word. So apparently Googled is a word. It means to search for information about something or the internal use of the search engine Google. And the example is, on Sunday she Googled an ex-boyfriend. Googled everything and I drove to every store in the area. Nobody seems to have cherry pie filling. You can get every variety and I could have done this pizza for sure with a cheese and maybe an apple pie topping or some strawberry or raspberries. But the stupid in me, who are you calling stupid? Yes, the stupid in me wants to make a perfect cherry cheese and chocolate pizza. So what am I gonna do? We sell fresh cherries, canned cherries, jarred cherries, and we sell frozen cherries here in Australia, but no cherry pie filling. Now, a cherry pie filling isn't that complicated. It's just cherries in a syrup, cooked up until they're caramelized and soft. So my first thought, so now you're having thoughts. You know that can be dangerous, Steve. So my first thought was to get some canned cherries and I'll reduce them down in a sugar syrup, make my own wonderful cherry pie filling. So I took a pan and a pink spatula and I made a sugar syrup, then I added the cherries and the sauce into that sugar syrup and I simmered it away until I got the right consistency for a beautiful cherry pie filling. Bub, 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 bub. It's making this sound a little bit different coming out of there. Hello, hello. And I was really pleased with this cherry pie filling. Look at that, there's a rich sauce. How good does that look? So back to the research, I decided to hit Google. Look at the color of those cherries. They're almost sort of glow in the dark red. So although I'm really pleased with this cherry sauce, but I really want that poppy sort of red color. So back to the drawing board, we went out to all the supermarkets and started looking at cherries again. And to be honest, we've kind of failed. We come up blank. There's no real cherries there or cherry sauce that I can make that would really do this justice. So what I'm gonna do is cheat it up a little bit, but I'm sharing with you, I am letting you know what we're doing. We're gonna call this a cherry cheese chocolate pizza and we are using cherries, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cheat, but in a good way. I'm being honest with you. If you can get cherry pie filling, which most of you probably can, just go for cherry pie filling. We're going for frozen cherries that have been pitted, and they're really quite great. I'll just show you in here. There's still a dark cherry, and no matter what I try, I know the sauce that I try to make with those cherries is going to be just too dark. Now, here in Australia, we don't have jellies or jams as we call them. We have jam, jam, jams, but we never have a jelly. I went looking for a cherry jelly or a cherry jam. I even went looking for strawberry jellies or strawberry jams. They don't have them, but they do have, and I know it's cheating, thick and rich strawberry pouring sauce. Now this stuff, and we looked at many different brands, glows in the dark just the way I like it. It looks so much more like the cherry pie filling that we've seen in all the photographs. So I'm gonna bend the rules. I'm gonna use a strawberry sauce and frozen cherries. Now I wanna ask, and I'm sure a lot of you would say, why not just make raspberries or something else for a pie topping? And as I said before, once I've set myself a silly challenge, I just want to follow through and make it look as good as it does in those wonderful Pinterest photos that you see all over the internet. So although I'm gonna be cheating just a little bit on the cherry pie filling, I'm not gonna cheat at all on the base. Now the request came in was really passionate that we go with a pizza base rather than the sweet base that's often used. So with that in mind, last night I started mixing up a beautiful pizza dough and I thought I'd leave it out to proof overnight. It did proof, it was pushing out of the bowl so I had to pop it in the fridge to chill down but it's ready here, it's warmed back up. I'm gonna show you quickly how I made the pizza dough though. We're starting with bread flour, 300 grams, 10 and a half ounces into my bowl. 
instant dried yeast. I'm gonna use a teaspoon and a half into my bowl. Half a teaspoon of salt. Water a little bit warm. We've got 160 mils, that's three quarters of a cup. And a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Draw that together with a fork. And as the dough starts to ball together, I'm just gonna pull it off of the fork. And I'm gonna use my hands just to draw this into a nice pizza dough. We want our dough to pull away from the side of the bowl. It's still gonna be a little raggy and textured like that. Get it out onto our countertop. And now I'm just gonna stretch and turn till I get a lovely smooth pizza dough. This be shoulder in, so it's gotta be higher. Meet Michelle, she gets all those quirky camera angles. Say hi to Michelle. That's what I was hoping you would say. Mix that dough for 10 minutes until it becomes lovely and smooth and you can push in and it springs back out like that. A little bit of olive oil in a bowl. I pop my dough and just coat it over with the oil. We're just going to cover that over and I want to leave that somewhere warm for an hour or so until it's doubled in size. See how the yeast has made this dough rise beautiful. It's full of little bubbles and there's the rich olive oil on the side. I'm knocking the air out of it and then I'm just going to divide this up into two pieces of dough. I'm going to reshape the dough into a ball. I'm going to lay the pizza balls on the counter and then I'm just going to cover that over with a damp cloth. We're just gonna leave the pizza balls on the side. They're gonna rise over the next five or 10 minutes. And then we're gonna prep them. Now, Ever Little, the viewer that asked for this particular recipe told me that they put a little bit of butter and then the cheeses on top, bake these blind basically in the oven before we put that wonderful topping. So that is what we're gonna do. Now you can roll the pizzas out or hand form them. If you're gonna form them, use semolina flour. It's got lovely texture to it. It's like rolling out your pizza dough on marbles. Don't skimp on the flour. I want a big pile of semolina on my counter and we're not wasting the semolina. I'm actually gonna put that back into a Tupperware. I use it over and over again when making pizza. Now look, just 10 minutes and see how that's already started to rise and it's lovely. It's almost like a cloud, it's so soft. Now I've got this lovely mound of semolina. I'm just gonna pop my dough on top and I'm just going to push it down but I'm gonna push a little bit more towards the outer sides. And you see how it's rolling around on the semolina? I'm creating almost like a little sombrero, so I've got this mound in the center. I'm then just going to flip that over, and then I'm cupping my hand, and I'm just going to turn the pizza and just push, I'm pushing out with the edge of my hand just to shape this dough. So we're starting to get the nice shape now. I'm just gonna flip that backwards and forwards. Now I haven't got my pizza peel, which is like a big flat tray that you put your pizzas into the oven with, and I haven't got all the pizza equipment I normally have, but I have got my pizza stone. I've heated up the oven to 250 degrees Celsius, which is about 500 Fahrenheit. Get your oven as hot as it can be. Now a little trick. I'm gonna use a bit of baking paper or baking parchment, and I'm gonna lift that pizza base up. I'm going to lay it out and just shape it on my baking parchment. I'm just going to take some soft butter and we're going to spread it over the base of our pizza. Now this is instead of olive oil and I'm really just doing as I've been instructed. So we've got an even coat of butter and I really don't know if this is gonna work. I'm blagging it a little bit so you're learning as I'm learning. Now we're gonna take mozzarella. We're not gonna skimp on it. I want lots of mozzarella on here but also we want a little bit of sharpness. So I've got some Parmigiano and I'm just gonna grate that over the top of the mozzarella. Now I haven't got my pizza peel as I say, but I found this lovely little wooden cutting board and it'll work just as well. I'm just gonna slide it under my pizza. We've got a nice hot pizza stone in there. And even through that baking paper, we're still gonna get that lovely contact with the hot stone. Now just keep an eye on that. It's gonna take about 10 to 12 minutes maximum when the surface of the cheese starts to bubble and go a lovely golden brown. We're gonna bring that pizza out. So at this point, I'm not sure, should I let this cool down or serve it hot? I'm going with the hot option. I've actually warmed up my cherry sauce, my Cheats cherry sauce, of course. The pizza looks absolutely gorgeous. The base is nice and crisp. I've got my warmed strawberry or cherry sauce, which I'm just going to actually pour over that pizza. I don't want too many cherries on there. It's still darker than I would have liked it but I mean, it smells so good. 
Now I thought, do we go with chocolate or Nutella? I've actually got some Nutella here, which I've just warmed by sunlight. And I'm just going to drizzle this over my pizza. A little zigzag, backward and forwards. Now I think it's looking good, but there's something missing, some contrast. Now I was told by Ebba Little that a little bit of cream cheese, I'm gonna give that a try. I think the whiteness of the cream cheese will just help the pizza pop a little bit and add a little bit of flavor. Now this is the first time I've ever made this pizza and my brain is telling me, is this gonna work? It certainly looks peculiar, but the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. I'm gonna get myself a slice of this while it's still warm. There she is, a slice of cheese and cherry and chocolate pizza. It's reasonably firm, actually. The base is gorgeous. What do you think? Marks out of 10. Your guess is as good as mine. I'm going in. Mm. Mm. Wow, that is crazy good. I love that. Sweet strawberry, <laughs> cherries, cheese. What a great combination. Now I'm not gonna pretend. Mm. You've gotta eat this one while it's hot. What do you think? Now I know already I can think of ways of improving this pizza. I wouldn't say it's been an outstanding success, but it is delicious. But that's the beauty of experimenting with cooking. You know, you get into the kitchen, you take an idea, you run with it. Perhaps it's gonna work, perhaps it isn't. This time, I think I've got sort of 80% there. There's a few little tweaks, comments down below. Let me know what you think. It's been a little bit of fun. I hope you've enjoyed this particular style of format. The pizza came out pretty well, actually. It tastes really good. I'd love to have some feedback for this style of filming if you like it. And um, I wanna say a big thank you to uh, all the audience out there that get involved with the channel and talk with us and let us know what to come up with. Without that, we couldn't have some fun and play around with this. And we've got a community down here in Steve's Kitchen. So if you want to comment, let me know how your week's been, how your day's been. I read all the comments. They are getting a little hard to reply to them all, but I read every single one. So love to you all, and I will see you again very shortly. Take care.